Hello everyone, I'm Alison Jane Reed, the editor and founder of the Luminaries magazine and uh, today I'm in London to interview composer, performer and electronic artist Sarah Anglis. Hello Sarah. Oh, hello. <laughs> Welcome. So you are going to be presented with uh, the Visionary Artists Award at the uh, IVAs tonight. And your, your work is being celebrated for its sense of innovation and the extraordinary intricacy and beauty of your music, which it's multifaceted. Uh, I've been listening to your music for the film Amulet, oh, uh, which you composed, and it just has many layers to it. How do you actually make that happen, Sarah? Um, and is all your music as ghostly, eerie and disturbingly beautiful or do you actually compose happy music? Um, I do too? compose happy music. Um, I think there's something that I'm... I think possibly because I, I take a lot of inspiration from sort of European and particularly English folk tradition where you do find this odd thing going on where you hear things that are very, very beautiful and then you find they're about the most ghastly, horrible, primal terror and they're always sort of vibrating on these two levels at once and I've just sort of drunk that music up since I was a kid and I think it's something that's always there in my sort of musical DNA and so quite often I'll write something that I think is just trying to be sort of charming and delightful and then people say, oh that was so spooky. <laughs> So I don't I, know. I've certainly described your music for Amulet as it is beautiful, it's ravishing, and you you immediately feel that you're trapped in this disturbing world of, of the film. There's so much going on, there are the bird and animal sounds, and then there's this multi-layered aspect to the music. It, it's mesmerising, but it's quite terrifying. <laughs> it's sort of beautiful and terrifying. It certainly takes you on an experience. Oh, thank you. And I think for me, I'm often drawn by the sort of eerie in, um, not in a, a lot of people sort of search for the eerie in the countryside and, and they'll talk about weird Britain and how weird Britain is a place that you find, you know, in some Arcadia somewhere. But what actually I'm very into is the eerie and strange that you'll find you know, inside a house, inside a building, inside a city and the sort of sedimented layers. Is it, is it the idea places. of bringing that building to life? Because that's all the time and place. I mean, with, with Amulet, you, you're capturing what's going on in this, in this house. And yeah. it's like the house and the, the whole story is alive with menace and things that are seen and not seen. Yes, and I mean, that was so... Amulet was written and directed by Romola Garay, and that was what she wanted. She did, did, you, did you and Romola spend a lot of time discussing what she wanted to achieve the disturbingly beautiful effects that you create in the music? Yeah, I mean, so Romola wanted the house almost to be like another character. It is, she, that's it. how it comes across. Oh. It's a, a character that's alive with menace. Yeah, and uh, and we should, we just spoke about how to do it, and I was just thinking about nightmares I had as a kid, where it was always going into a dark house with sort of dankness and sort of drips from the plumbing and things like that. And there's a lot of, without giving too much away, there's a lot of plumbing action <laughs> in Amulet. <laughs> I and didn't realise that. What I remember is well the 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 chimes and the cymbals, but then. The birds as well, you know, that, that wonderful piece of music, which is so layered. Um, I mean, you, are, you react to it in, in a multitude of ways. You, you feel like you've been hijacked. Oh, right. Well, yeah, and I think, um, I possibly because I've worked quite a bit in theatre, I think sometimes my music is on the edge between, I don't know whether you'd call it composition or sound design. And, and yeah. I, Well, it's it, all of those things, isn't yeah. it? it? It's sound design and music and composition. Yes, yes. Just opposed. And so I'm as inter I suppose I'm more I'm more interested in sounds than notes in a way. I like the descriptors for my music when I'm trying to put it together. I'm thinking about manipulating sounds rather than notes. So you know I'll take sounds from a situation and try to sort of 
use them to sort of musical effect. It's really hard to explain, but... Um, Were you on set with, with Romola, or, or did you discuss the film and you composed the musical way from the action, or did you actually go and, and see the film? Sadly, I didn't go on set. I wasn't invited, but I think I was away in... Um, I think I was away in uh, on a project in New York at the time. But, um, um, yeah, we, we discussed it at length, and Romola did have this very particular feeling of wanting it to feel... Um, sort of cloying and trapped and sinister and something sinister about the house and for me that was exciting because that wasn't about implanting some notes from instruments from outside it was about okay so what is in the texture of the house that can be used and it was you know it was very so I imagine you you had a lot of visuals of the the set so that you could I had the film I had the, I had oh, a right, lot you of had picture the film. yeah I had right. a lot so of you picture. could use that yeah. as your reference Yes, and um, also Romola gave a very clear direction that um, I suppose the, the uh, <laughs> I saw somebody on Twitter the other day call it a boss girl movie, which I thought was quite good. Um, yeah, it's, it's very much a sort of female vengeance movie, and she wanted triumphant female voices in it. And we had an idea that it was something European, but we didn't quite know where, and we didn't need to specify where. And so I just sort of mined all my sort of favourite... Uh, sort of musical inflections from it's, it's quite a departure from the films I've I've I'm a fan of Romola's work and I loved her in I Capture the Castle I don't know if you've seen that which is not spooky it's a coming of age film uh, based on a on a really beloved book and obviously she's she's played a lot of um Jane Austen. Yeah, and she, lo so, and she loves horror. I mean, we really yeah, so to talk about horror. Yeah, that Romola you know, loves, is a fan of horror. Yeah. It's quite, quite a revelation. Yeah, and I think what's interesting about this film is that it lures you in. You think it, you kind of think you know, the, I won't say too much, but it's one of these films where you kind of think, oh, I know the genre, I know what the tropes are, and then she does a really interesting flip that's been, um, I'll just say it's been quite talked about what happens.